By the light of the flickering flame, the night shadow is with us all. Shadow Theater. Tonight's tasty treat is filled with witchcraft and sorcery, deceit and repeat. I remember when I was just a small tadpole. My babushka would put me to sleep at night with tales of the old country. Stories of dirty witches and whiny warlocks, Malishka stealing candy and turned into frogs. I would not lie. Sometimes I would pee pee in my pants. I was so afraid. My babushka would say, Goulash, stranger danger, creepy peepy. Trust no one and you will be fine. She was right, you know. No trusting for Goulash, except for Count Cat and Dr. Macabro. Tonight, we bring to you the classic film City of the Dead, aka Horror Hotel. Directed by John Moxie and starring one of our favorites, Christopher Lee. It's a good one, my friends. I hope you enjoy. But first, let us check in with our friends. There is something nasty afoot in our town. Dr. Macabro, I have a divine feline disaster. All of the cats in the neighborhood around here have gone missing. It seems that... A witch coven over here in Whitewood and catnapping all of my feline friends, turning them into their familiars and forcing them to do terrible naughty things. Thus now I fear for my life. However, I have an idea. Here in the laboratory, we could concoct some sort of formula, 
a potion to poison the witches and free my four-legged furry friends. That's a great idea. A daring and dubious idea. I have all the ingredients here in my lab. We can concoct a potion to give to those damn witches and melt them into oblivion. My cousin Dorothy concocted such a potion once. She gave it to her dog Toto. Wasn't a good sight. But that's a story for another time. Let's get to work in haste. Excellent. In the meantime, to all of our night chateau fiends out there in TV land, if you have any information on our missing cats, call the number below. Also, if you'd like, we are always accepting donations of catnip, laser pointers, scratch posts. Oh, and of course, stray cat records. It don't mean a thing if your tail ain't got that swing. Ha, ha, ha. But seriously, call the number. Rat-a-tat-a, cat a bat a familiar you should be. Boogie boogie, snoogie loogie, a familiar we should see. Hocus pocus, smokus locus, the smell is now complete. <laughs> Your turn, young lady. You seem to be a very special kitty. We're going to do something special with you. Now stop fighting me and get in here. Hunt I me meow. You're going to pay for this. Or at least pay me for this. I mean, do you know who I am? I am Cat Fire of Tritulania. I'm no mere, no mere mortal cat. I am vampire cat. I am a goddess amongst the felines. And you fools are going to regret this, I assure you. A vampire cat. <laughs> How cute. You are a fool. People in town are fools. We're going to take all of your cat friends and make them our servants. We're going to possess your men and have them kill for us. We're going to crush all of you. A vampire cat. You're going to go to a very special place. Witches! Get me the cage now! I think maybe I'll burn this one and eat her later. If I don't get out of here on my own, I guarantee you Count Cat will get you and us fiends. You will regret this and we're going to cut you up and feast upon your guts. I will save you for last, dear. I will wait patiently until the witch's Sabbath in a few days, and then I'm going to eat you. I'm going to boil your bones, and maybe, just maybe, I'll even drink your blood. A vampire cat's blood might make me even stronger, hmm? What do you say, kitty kitty? I say that if you don't get me out of here right now, Count Cat will come and get you. Dr. Macabre will come and get you. Even Goulash will come and get you. I promise you, by the whiskers on my face, from the ears on my head, that is you who is going to die. Who are these people you speak of? More fools? More stupid fools? <laughs> I'll get out of here yet. I'll take care of that. No! I've been declawed! You witch! Portions of Night Shadow Theater are brought to you by Dark Parks Books and Collectibles. Check them out online at darkparksbooks.com. <laughs>that are taking cats and making them their familiars to do their bidding, as well as sacrificing women and children. Do you have any potions in any of your books that could help us defeat these such witches? Ah yes, Dr. Macabro. Count Cat has told me of his woes and the witches, uh, the dirty deeds. It says here, we can use several things to kill witches and get rid of them forever. I found this absinthe concoction the best suited. One cup of goat's milk, 
one cup of hot tea, a spritz of tobacco sauce, two lemon slices, a bit of arsenic, and four chocolate chip cookies. It is undeniably the best formula for the death of witches. <laughs> it seems to make them burp uncontrollably and poof, they explode. Isn't that excellent? Indeed, I think we should start working on this right away. I fear for Count Cat's life. You remember, he is the king of all felines. With haste, let's go. Welcome back, my friends. As you see, we have a dangerous situation in our midst. While Dr. Macabro creates his concoction to defeat the witches, I have planned a most excellent interview for tonight's movie City of the Dead. But for now, I am off to an appointment to see a woman of mysticism and magic to further help our situation. Elizabeth Selwyn. Hast thou consorted with the witch Elizabeth Selwyn? No. Burn the witch! <laughs> March in the year of our Lord 1692, 
we, the people of Whitewood, Massachusetts, condemn thee as a witch. May the flames cleanse thy soul of its evil, of its lust for blood, but may they bring about the death of Abigail Adams. A black mass for all eternity shall I sacrifice unto thee. I give thee my soul. Take me into thy service. Olvos, listen to my servant. Grant her this pact for all eternity, and I with her. And if we fail thee but once, you may do with our souls what you will. Make this city an example of thy vengeance. Curse it! It for all eternity. And let curse. me be the instrument of thy curse. Hear me, O Lucifer. Hear me. She's making a curse. Curse? Burn, witch, burn, burn, burn! So shouted the people of Whitewood when they burned Elizabeth Selwyn in 1692. Though, as I've said, little is known today of the actual practice of witchcraft in 17th century New England, superstition, fear, and jealousy drove the Puritans to accuse their friends and relatives of consorting with the devil. Raiding around huge bonfires, repeating vindictive chants, they consigned the poor creatures to the flames. The tortured souls cried out in agony as the flames mounted higher and higher. Burn, witch, burn, witch, burn, burn, burn. Dig that crazy beat. Shh. That will be all for today. Tomorrow will be my concluding lecture on the history of witchcraft in 17th century New England. I shall bring along some illustrations which I'm sure will interest you all. I'll bring the matches. <laughs> Maitland! Since you chose to attend these lectures, I had hoped that it was in a spirit of scientific curiosity about the subject. That'll be all. Bill, how could you? He takes it all so darn seriously. He's got you all hypnotized. Oh, Miss Barlow. Yes, Professor. Can I see you for a moment, please? Yes. What about our date? I'll Look, um, I'll wait for you outside. Eh? Yes, Professor. Rather a difficult young man, that. I fear that you are more of an attraction to him than my poor efforts. However, I've been reading through your papers, Miss Barlow. They show a very sound appreciation of the subject. I want to go to New England to do my senior paper. Mm -hmm. They're really quite good, you know. Well, I'm not quite satisfied. I feel I need some first-hand research. I want to get the atmosphere. Find out how widespread witchcraft really was. What the witches were really like. Well, that might take a little time, you know. Well, I have the time. My brother and I were going to spend our vacation with our cousins. What I'd really like to do is to get a room in the smallest, oldest town in New England I can find. Check through all the town hall records. Recheck the libraries. Talk to the Puritan descendants. Make a really thorough investigation. Your brother is professor of science, Miss Barlow. I hardly think he'd be very interested in the history of witchcraft. Then I'd go alone. You don't think he'd object to that? You leave Richard to me. He's picking me up here for lunch. Hello, Bill. Professor Barlow. Nan here? 
Yeah, she's in there with him. Well, I don't like her getting mixed up in this witchcraft business. Why not? It's only part of a history course. Professor Barlow. Yeah? Before you go in there, could, could I have a word with you? Oh, sure. Well, it's about Nan and me. Oh. If you're really serious about this, I happen to know of a town in New England. As a matter of fact, it's the identical place where the events occurred that I mentioned in today's lecture, Whitewood. It's uh, quite a small place. It's a little bit off the beaten track, so maybe these directions will help you. Thank you. I think you might very well find what you're looking for there. I happen to know the woman who owns the inn in Whitewood. Her name is Newless, Mrs. Newless. So you just tell her I sent you. Raven's Inn, Whitewood. What's Whitewood? Now, Dick, don't be too upset, but uh, I'm going to change my plans for the vacation. Change your plans? Yes. Going to a place called Whitewood for a week or so to do some research. Who are you? And what about Cousin Sue? Well, she's expecting you for a birthday party on the 17th. She'll never forget I can you. still easily make it by then. This is important. My term paper's got to be good. It could mean a scholarship. Man, I've made all my way. Come on, Dick. You'll have a good time without me. My mind's made up. I'm going to Whitewood. But surely any good encyclopedia will give you all the nonsense you want to know about witchcraft. Witchcraft is not nonsense, Barlow. I'm sorry, Driscoll. Witchcraft, black magic sorcery, to me it's nothing but fairy tale mumbo jumbo. I'm a scientist, Driscoll. I believe what I can see, what I can feel and touch. The basis of fairy tales is reality. The basis of reality is fairy tales. Well, As a scientist, you should be familiar with that quotation. Yeah, well, I don't believe that somebody in Chicago can die of a heart attack because some woman in New Orleans sticks a pin in a wax doll. Maybe you don't. But practitioners of voodoo will claim otherwise. Dick, you're just being difficult. No. When I look into a microscope, Driscoll, I see bacteria swimming, fighting, existing. That's real. These witches, they were persecuted and burnt in the 17th century were real, too, but they weren't witches. They were pitiful human beings, victims of hysteria. There are many eminent scholars who have documentary proof of the actual practice of witchcraft. Yeah, but how effective was this practice? Did any of these eminent scholars ever meet a real practicing witch? Did you ever meet a witch, Driscoll? Perhaps. Oh, come on, you're an historian. No witch ever survived the burning at the stake for all that pact with the devil. In 1692, Elizabeth Selwyn went to the stake. She was buried in a churchyard in New England. And yet three years later... Yeah? Three years later, a new wave of blood sacrifices broke out in the village that had condemned her. The daughters of the elders who had condemned her were themselves found murdered with every last drop of blood drained from their bodies. And afterwards, people came forward to testify that they had actually seen Elizabeth Selwyn. Oh, stop. This would be more effective at midnight with howling winds and crashing thunder, and even then it wouldn't frighten anyone. Dick, I'm sorry, Professor Driscoll. That's all right, Miss Barlow. You won't be the first person to have scoffed at the subject. Honey, when you get to, um, where is it? Whitewood. Ah, yes, Whitewood. Well, send me a picture postcard of a witch. If possible, autographed. Now, uh, let's have some lunch, eh? I'm sorry, I have a date. <laughs> And darling, I still don't see why you have to go off to this Whitewood place. Now, I thought we were going to have some time together during this vacation. You know I want to be with you. It's just this is important. Look, what the heck can you find that hasn't been found before? I don't know. It's just that maybe, hidden in some attic or buried in some old antique shop, there's something that might give a whole new outlook to the Oh, subject. what new outlook can there be? You're a science student, honey. You know how important research is. But this isn't about anything real. This is just superstitious people burning silly old women. But suppose the women weren't silly. Suppose they really had a pact with the devil. A pact that could have supernatural power. Oh, come on. What kind of power? I don't know. <laughs> oh, look, it's no use, Bill. We both tried our hardest to talk her out of going. Do you really think she will find anything worthwhile? Well, 
I think we have to respect a desire to find something new, even if we, even if we don't agree with the subject. Agree with it? I've never heard so much nonsense as that guy Driscoll talks in all my life. Well, here I am, all packed. Oh, I suppose there's nothing I can say will stop you from going, huh? Yeah, well, I'll, uh, I'll put this in the car. I still hoped you'd change your mind, Nan. Don't worry, darling. I'll be back as quick as I can, and I'll write. Well, don't forget me altogether, huh? <laughs> I won't. Give Sue my love, and don't forget we have a date at our party. Goodbye, darling. Excuse me, can you help me? I seem to be lost. Sure, if I can. I'm looking for the Wamport Road. Wamport Road? Hardly anyone uses that anymore. Well, my friend gave me the directions. Uh, take Road 28A, turn onto the Wamport Road, bear left at the fork through to Whitewood. Whitewood? Uh, am I that far away? No, ma'am, not far. Not many God-fearing folks visit Whitewood nowadays. If I were you, I'd... Uh, if, if you'll excuse me, I'm in a hurry. Which way is it? Well, follow this road about two miles. You come to a fourth. There'll be a sign, Wamport Road. Turn left, keep straight. There'll be Whitewood. Thank you very much. Wamport Road. Wamport Road, yes. Oh, good. I was afraid I missed it. Is it uh, Whitewood you seek? Yes. I do. Uh, would I be imposing if... No, of course not. Get in. Thank you. I think the Highway Commission would do something about these roads. Watch out. Here comes another bump. What is your mission in Whitewood? Mission? Well, I'm going there to do some research on witchcraft. Professor Driscoll gave us some very interesting lectures on the subject. And I'm going there to get some original source material. Do you know Whitewood? I've known it for many years. Do you go there often? Fairly often. Oh, then you must know the Raven's Inn. I shall be resting there. Oh, so shall I. Oh, my name's Nan Barlow. My name's Jethro Keane. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Just like a picture out of a history book. I feel as though I were in the 17th century. Why hasn't Whitewood been written about? Well, it's off the beaten path. Few tourists come here. For Whitewood, time stands still. Look at that church. Must have been beautiful. What a shame they let it get so run down. Straight on? Yes, follow the road around. Ah, oh, there it is. What a lovely old building. 17th century, at least. How picturesque can you get? Right by the graveyard. Yes, it has not been used for more than 200 years. Any witches buried there? There are indeed. All in a section of unconsecrated ground. Spooky, isn't it? Well, keep your fingers crossed for me, Mr. Keene. I hope Mrs. Newells has that room.
Oh, I didn't hear you come in. Are you Mrs. Newless? Mm. Oh, uh, I'm Nan Barlow. I was told I might find a room here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was recommended by a friend of mine, Professor Driscoll. Perhaps you know him. That will be all, Lottie. Sorry to keep you waiting. Unfortunately, Lottie cannot talk. I've often told her not to answer the bell. Oh, poor thing. Then you're Mrs. Newless. I am. May I help you? Yes, I'd like to have a room here for two weeks. The hotel is quite full. Oh, the guests are never about at this time of the day. Well, I'm a student of Professor Driscoll's. He told me if I mentioned his name, I'd have no trouble. Well, there is a room I could let you have. It's just off the lobby. Oh, thank you. Oh, Mrs. Newless, that plaque, is it true that Elizabeth Selwyn was really burnt here for being a witch? She was. And do you believe she was a witch? Come along. I'll show you to your room. I hope you will be comfortable. Shadow Theater is brought to you by the Fourth Horseman in Long Beach, California. Eat beer, drink pizza. century, New England, the witchcraft craze was in full effect. Elizabeth Selwyn had just burned alive in the Whitewood, Massachusetts, with a promise to return after death and a curse that would forever doom the village. The witches of Eastwick had just given birth to three demons by the fiery loins of Jack the Nicholson. The wicked witch of the West had pulled back the curtain of the mighty Oz, and the ever so evil uh, Wilmina Witchy Poo stole the talking flute Freddy from Jimmy and his dragon friend H.R. Puff and Stuff. It was the worst of times. It was the best of times. Any questions? And what about Samantha Stevens? Is it true she could twinkle her nose? I'd like to learn more about that. Yes, and what about these cats? Why is everybody always trying to say that the black cats are evil? It is injustice, I tell you. Totally unfair. Ah, yes, Samantha Stevens. Well, she did. Holy moly, what a dream, my friends. Next time, Gulash needs to cut down on the vodka. Let's get to our special guest. Good evening, Kitty Poos. Tonight, we have a very special guest on the show. James Balsamo. He's a very famous movie maker. Many of you might know. He makes a scary horror movies. He makes a sexy movies. He makes a funny movies. He writes them, he directs them, and he stars in them. Welcome, my good friend, Gulash's good friend, James Balsamo. Oh, wait. Let me get my magical book of interview questions. There's a lot of good ones in there. Welcome, James. So, I know you're always working on the movies. What movie or movies are you currently working on right now? And can you tell us anything about them? Yes, of course. Hollywood Werewolf. It Wants Blood, Alien Danger with Raven Van Slender, Alien Danger with Raven Van Slender 2, 14 Ghosts, Mark and Clark World Adventurers, To Me The Hungry Tumor, Bite School 2, 
Well, you know what? Uh, I love bread, you know, French bread. So I, I, I think it would be an honor to call you a handsome baguette. <laughs> you well, better you. believe it. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, that's right. You know, that joke's a crust have. Speaking of the yeast of my concerns, let's talk about my new movie, It Wants Blood, in stores now, starring me. That's right, handsome me. Also, Eric Roberts and Ola Ray from the Thriller music video. That's oh, right, really everybody knows the dance. I know I do. So anyway, it's about a monster owned by this uh, politician named Eric Roberts, and then he's running for senator, but there's another monster, and there it is right there. And then these two monsters battle to the death in this political arena we call life. And that's out now in stores everywhere, Walmart, Best Buy, Barnes & Noble, so just Google me, I'm famous. Go very get my good, movie. He is famous, I told you before. Oh, that's a very good. Can you tell us a little bit about how you started making movies? Were you just a kiddie poo, or perhaps somebody with a school, or an old, let me tell you, who are some of your influences? Okay, that's a loaded several <laughs> question. That's the way good works. <laughs> so I did start as a kiddie poo. I started acting when I was eight, and I didn't know anybody that made horror movies. And all the way until uh, college, I wanted to be an actor, but I got tired of auditioning. So I went to Troma, and I took out Lloyd Kaufman's garbage for a year, and I learned oh. every trick in the book, and I learned how to make my own damn movie. And I've been making feature films ever since, and I've only produced about 30 now, so I'm slacking. That's very, very good. So, Lloyd Kaufman, uh, influence? Anybody else the influence of the movie making? Yeah, you know what? I, I love Italian horror. I love uh, oh, Lu yes. Lucio Fulci and very Dario good. Argento, you know what I mean? Uh, the bird with the crystal plumage, the cinematography is unbelievable. I don't know how more people don't talk about all the Dutch tilts and beautiful canted angles. That's very good, very, very good. Let me ask you another. I know that music is a big influence and a special treat in your movies. I've seen many rock stars in your movies and many great bands on your soundtracks. Can you name a few and who is your favorite to work with? Yeah, Phil Ensemble from Pantera. Here's a fun story. After we filmed, he put his arm around me and gave me a headbutt and said, you're an all right dude. A buddy of mine, Ryan, is in a band I don't know if you've ever met him, but he's got a killer band that's in my film, Killer Waves. Oh, good, I should very good friends with Ryan. Contemplating murder! Yeah, I mean, that band's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, also I've worked with the uh, Guar, Testament, uh, Pantera. You know, you, there's a few. Uh, uh, also Judas Priest. Rob Halford is in two of my films. Holy so, moly! You know, I, I like metal and I like to work with we are like a medal at the Night Shadow Theater, I tell you this. <laughs> okay, but what about actors? I know you've had many famous actors in their movies. Yeah. Do you want to name drop a few and tell us a bit? Give us the dish. Yes, I will dish it out. Yes. Like uh, Andy Dick stars in my new movie Hollywood Werewolf. It's a real Everybody battle. Everybody loves Dick. That's true, they do. <laughs> There's stiff competition though. <laughs> Tommy Chong has also been in a, a few of my films. And uh, don't forget Eric Roberts and uh, Tom Sizemore. He's uh, another it's famous dick. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what, for my first film I had uh, Dave Brocky from War, aka Odorous Drungus. It was really cool. I was a big War fan since I was a little kid, so it was a dream come true to feed Dave Brocky to a seven-foot alien. That reminds me, the 10-year anniversary is out now. Go buy it. Check it out. It's got war in it. How many movies have you made? I don't think I can count them all. Is it particular favorites, or are they all your little babies? Well, they all are my little babies. Some of them are my no, bastards. Babies. Some of them are my bastard children. <laughs> <laughs> but I produced over 30 feature films Holy moly. Uh, to date. But some of my favorites are I Spill Your Guts, Cool as hell, one and two, and uh, my new one, it wants blood. Go get it right now. They're all very, very good. I tell you, Gulash love all of James' movies. <laughs> oh, you're so kind, James. We are very lucky to have you on the show. It's true. No, I, <laughs> it is very true. Now, I'd like to ask you a couple fun questions. Okay. 
And let's wrap it up. I know you're a busy man. <laughs> oh, what is your favorite horror movie of all time? And if it's more than one, it's okay because Goulash has lots of favorite horror movies. Y you know what? I honestly don't like to watch films more than once because Whoa. there's so many films out there, but a film that I've seen like a million times is Army of Darkness. Oh. I love I love Sam Raimi, it's a perfect film. You know, I also love The Thing, John Carpenter's remake of The Thing. Um, and The Blob remake is another one of my favorite movies. I like 80s gore and uh, practical cool effects. Cool you know, like Tom Savini stuff. Tom's in my movie Cool as Hell, so. If you haven't seen it, go get it right now. This guy, I tell you. <laughs> uh, Goulash, no, James likes the sexy ladies. He has many of them in his films. They run around naked and they eventually they die. Uh, who is your favorite lady actress of all time? Favorite lady actress? My mom. I put her in a bunch of my movies. Oh, uh, well, probably Linnea Quigley, who's oh. in my film uh, Cool as Hell 2, and also Brink Stevens, who's in it once oh, blood. Oh, yes, Brink! So, yeah, you know, I, I love these 80s scream queens, and it's an honor to have them in And me too, that's why I asked the question. I love it, the, oh, the, yeah. the, the, you know, the DNA. Okay? Hands, hands down the best thing I ever did. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, if you had millions of dollars in this budget, what would be the ultimate James Balsamo film? If I had millions of dollars, why would I make movies? I'd just sit at the beach and drink delicious beverages. But no, I don't have those millions of dollars, so I have to keep making movies. Okay, Kitty Poots, let us let the James get about the work. He's a very busy man, as I said before. One more question for you, my friend. If you had to tell the future filmmakers out there any advice, what would it be? You know what? This happens to me a lot from touring the country and signing autographs. Kids come up to me and say, how do you do it, James? How did you get your movie into stores? And I, I say just do it. Pick up a camera and start making a movie. You don't need millions of dollars. You have some friends. Even if you're alone, there's a thing called a tripod. Put it on a tripod and that's it. You could act in front of it. I know I did. I mean, I made like a bunch of short films, which I made a whole movie out of. It's called Mind Melters. And so you could get that now at stores everywhere. You could also make your own mind melters in a sense. So start making movies, kids. Pick up a camera and uh, go for it. Thank you so much, James, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to visit with us at Night Shadow Theater. No, no, the pleasure's all yours, really. Aha! All of you crazy boils and ghouls, you can visit James Balsamo at the address we have down here on the screen. And make sure to buy his movies. I bid you all. A good night. Bon oui. Goulash has told me that on the eve of the witch's sabbath, they toast with a bottle of absinthe in order for their rituals to succeed. I have a plan. The hags will get their medicine, I assure you. plan to deliver the bottle to the Raven's Inn. Ah, oh, Mr. Gregoroff, thank you for visiting with me today. Uh, according to my notes here, it seems you have a witch's problem on your hands. My, how frightful that must be for you and your friends. Uh, how can I help the situation? Yes, Miss Selwyn, that is the case. We believe there is a coven of witches in the town of Whitewood that are taking over the world. First, they take our pets. Now, they are taking humans and turning them into demons. These Vidma are working for Satan. They're going to get him the father of lies upon a throne and take it all over. What must we do? Well, as practitioner myself, of the good kind, of course. I believe I can help your situation, and in the process, I think I might be able to help myself. Look deep into my eyes, Goulash. Deep into the depths of darkness. Deep into your heart. Deep into your desires.
What are you doing to me, Miss Elman? What are you doing to me? I do not feel so well. I feel like a hot balloon is in my belly. I'm like a Tyson punch in my head. What have you done to me? Oh no, here we go. The devil's inside of me. Oh, this is so weird. You're a dirty witch. You've got me. Most agreeable. Well, if there's anything you should need, just ring the bell for me at the desk. Thank you. been so many months. I've counted the days to this holiday. So have the others. It wasn't easy for some of my guests to get here. Many had to travel vast distances. I was lucky. The last few miles were enchanting. Miss Barlow is very good company. You must be tired, Jethro. Your room is ready. And the festivities? I am prepared. Oh, Mrs. Nullis. I uh, thought I'd have a short look around town. I won't be gone long. I think you'll find the church interesting. Unfortunately, it no longer has a congregation. He will be pleased. I'm told this was once a house of worship. It is still a house of worship. I am the reverend of this church as long as the breath of life is within me. This house shall remain God's house. It must have been a beautiful building. For me, it is still beautiful. I'm sorry. What a shame the people have let it fall into such a state. Strangers rarely come to Whitewood. Who are you? I'm Nan Barlow. I'm staying at the Raven's Inn. Why have you come to Whitewood? Well, because I'm interested in witchcraft. Young woman, leave Whitewood. Leave Whitewood tonight. For 300 years, the devil has hovered over this city, made it his own. The people in it are his. Evil has triumphed over good here. Look at my church. I have no parish. No one worships here. His is the power. What power? Leave Whitewood. Leave Whitewood tonight. I beg of you. What power? Leave before it is too late. <laughs>
Good evening. Please excuse the mess. We haven't been open long. You have some very interesting things here. Yes, they, they belong to my grandmother. When she died, I came back to sort things out. Oh, I'm sorry. Then you don't live here? No, my family lived here for generations, but I've just been back a few weeks. Would you like to have a look around? Thank you. Oh, I didn't mean to frighten you when I came in. It's just that all the people I've met here have acted like I'm a person from another world. They don't see many strangers here. And I had the most, well, unusual experience with the Reverend. He barred my way from the church. And he talked to me about a curse. And he warned me to leave Whitewood. Can you explain that? No, I can't. Does he often act that way? He's my grandfather. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. It's happened before with strangers. Oh, the lack of parishioners and loss of his sight has made him bitter and suspicious. I'm afraid what with him and the town, I, I was very scared. When I saw your lights, I made a dash for them. I'm glad you did. Um, do you have any books or pamphlets on witchcraft? You do, don't you? A friend of mine... Well, we, we have a collection gathering dust, but why on earth would you be interested in... Oh, I'm sorry. It's really none of my business. Oh, no, that's all right. I'm studying it in college, and I've come here to write my term paper. Well, just wait. I'll see what I can find. That's Elizabeth Selwyn, burned as a witch, March 3rd, 1692. Yes, I know. I saw the plaque in the lobby of the hotel. You're staying at the Ravens Inn? Yes. It was recommended to me by a friend of mine, Professor Driscoll. Alan Driscoll? Yes, do you know him? No, but my grandfather speaks of him. His family come from here. Oh, I didn't know that. Here, I think this will do for a start. What a lovely locket. May I see it? I believe it's quite old. Oh, it is. You're very lucky. I'm even more lucky to have found this. A treatise on devil worship in New England. This must be a very rare book. I'm afraid I couldn't afford to buy it. You can borrow it, if you like. Oh, could I? That would be wonderful. I promise I'll bring it back in a few days. You're very welcome, Miss... Uh... Barlow. Nan Barlow. Nan Barlow. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. I, I've heard some strange noises in my room. Oh, possibly the water and the pipes. This is a very old inn. No, it seemed to be coming from the cellar underneath. I hardly think so, Miss Barlow. The cellars do not extend beneath your room. But then why is there a trap door in the floor? The ground was filled in many years ago to strengthen the foundations of the building. But I'm sure well, I... if you insist, I will come and see you. I don't hear anything. Well, just a few minutes ago. Never mind, I'm sorry. You're welcome. But you can see for yourself there is no ring in the trapdoor because there is no reason to lift it. There is nothing underneath but earth. <laughs> More towels. I haven't used mine. They're quite clean.
Bloody, I've told you before not to bother the guests. Miss Barlow, I thought you might care to join the others. I will, as soon as I finish my notes. I'll put some clothes on and join them. A treatise on devil worship in New England. Well, do you find this interesting? Why, it's fascinating. The things I've learnt. I bet you don't know the half of it. And you live right here on a spot where the witches were actually burnt. Listen to this. On Candlemas Eve, February 1st, in the year 1692, a coven of witches, a coven that's 13, some men, some women, whose power came from the devil, gathered beneath the Raven's Inn to perform a black mass in the honor of Lucifer. The witch Elizabeth Selwyn, later to be burnt at the stake, marked a young girl for sacrifice by obtaining an object of value belonging to her with which to call her, and leaving in its place a dead bird and a sprig of woodbine. The witches sacrificed her on the altar and drank her blood at the hour of 13. What's the hour of 13? Well, personally, I have never heard a clock strike more than 12. Now, how about joining the dancing? In a little while, I promise. Oh, by the way, I seem to have misplaced my locket. I remember having it in my room, and now it's disappeared. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'll ask Lottie. Well, I'm, I'm not saying it was stolen. It's just I remember having it on the dresser, and now it's gone. I would appreciate it. Of course. I'll look into it immediately. Lottie, I have warned you too often about annoying our guests. If you disobey me again, I shall turn you out. And if I turn you out, there will be no place for you anywhere. You do understand, Lottie, don't you? Ah, Miss Barlow, I'm afraid Lottie is nowhere to be found, but I will inquire about your locket first thing in the morning. Oh, thank you. Where is everybody? Most of the other guests have gone to services. Services on the 1st of February? Candlemas Eve. The night when the witches mocked the rituals of the church. Are you all right, Miss Barlow? Yes, quite, thank you. Good night. Good night, Miss Barlow. Thank <laughs> you. 
five, six, seven. No! No, Mrs. Phillips, no! No, no, no! I am Elizabeth Selwyn. No, no! Eleven. Oh, no! Let go of me! Let go! Well, Sure, she'll show up. She, she probably met a good looking he witch and is bringing him along to the party. Only they broomstick blew a gasket. Well, it's not like Nan to be late for anything. Aren't you a bit worried about her? Oh, she'll be here. I'm sure she'll make it. Oh, it's probably her now. Well, you answer the door, and I'm going to put a record on for some dancing. All right. Hi, Dick. Bill. Oh, what's the matter? You expecting somebody else? Oh, yes, Nan. Look, come in, come in. Well, Nan, didn't you hear yet? We made a date to meet here before she left for Whitewood. Well, she probably got held up. Look, look, give me your coat, huh? Ah, Nan was never late for anything in her life. Relax. Take it easy. Join the party. She'll be here. Dick. Dick, I haven't had a letter from Nan in over two weeks now. Well, she's probably been too busy working on her paper. No, no, there's something wrong. I know it. Look, will you do something for me? Mm -hmm. Ring up Whitewood, will you? Ask him, ask him if she's left. You serious? Yes, I am. Okay. On a long distance. I'd like to speak with Miss Nan Barlow at the Ravens Inn, Whitewood. No, I, uh, I don't know the phone number. What? Didn't she give you the phone number? Oh, I know, but uh, that's my sister. They say there's no such place as the Ravens Inn. But that's crazy. She's staying there. Give me the police. Welcome back. Satan is laying down his groovy music in my head and all throughout my body. Lucifer is burning my loins and Diesel Bob is patting me on the back. The witches have possessed your old pal Goulash. And now I want to kill. Da! I want to kill everybody. I want to kill.
thing in his Ah, B for Belzebub. Well, my friends, you can hear that Goulash is out in the graveyard making all kinds of noise. I think he might have gotten taken by those witches. Let's hope he didn't get possessed. Thunder Macabre! I'm going to kill you! I'm going to cut you up into little pieces and make you into my soup! Delicious you will be! Snap out of it, man! The witches have gotten a hold of you! They possessed you! The power of Christ compels you! The power of Christ compels you! Your mother sucks blood and lives in hell! The power of Christ no. compels you! No, I'm burning! The power burning. of Christ compels you! I'm burning! The power of Christ compels We'll have him drink the formula for the witches, just a tiny bit so that we don't kill him, but hopefully bring him back to normal. She left in such a hurry, she must have forgotten to return it to you, Miss Russell. She seems such a nice girl, too. Wouldn't have thought she was the sort who'd forget to return a book. We cannot always judge by our first impressions, can we? I'm not usually wrong about the people I lend my books to. Well, perhaps you'll be more careful in future. Thank you for letting me have it. Remember me to your grandfather. Lottie, get out of the way, you clumsy creature. Can I help you? Yes, we're from the sheriff's office. We had a call this evening. A missing person's report from some college kid named Nan Barlow. The party calling said that her last known whereabouts was the Raven's Inn. Nan Barlow, that's strange. Yes, I met her. When did you last see her? About two weeks ago. She came to my shop and, and borrowed this book. It's quite valuable, and so not hearing from her, I decided to come and get it. Mrs. Newless had it. May I? Yes. A treatise on devil worship. I must put this in the report. Peculiar thing some of these college kids do nowadays. Well, thanks for your help. Come on, Charlie. Okay, thanks. And thank you. Well? The police sent a car out to the Raven's Inn. And checked out two weeks ago. I don't get it. Well, neither do I. Look, these are Nan's books and papers. Go through them. See if you can find anything which might give us a lead. I'm going to pay a visit to a colleague of mine.
Well, yes, of course, please do. Can I take your coat? I tried to phone you last night, but I, I guess you weren't in. No, uh, no, I wasn't. Would you care to go in the study? Sit yourself down. Thanks. You take a drink? Ryan soda. Ice, please. Now what's on your mind? Her man's missing. And she has been since the day after she arrived at Whitewood. Really? You quite sure? That's what the police said. And what are they doing about it? Carrying out a routine check. I, I don't suppose they can do much more until they've got something definite to go on. Well, I would have thought there was a very great deal more they could do. What? As far as they're concerned, she disappeared two weeks ago and no one in the village seems to know anything about it. What did you come see me for? I thought you might have some ideas. Why did you send her to Whitewood? Because it was the best place for her research. And you suggested she stay at the Raven's Inn. I'm sure, it's the only inn there is. With an unlisted phone number. The inn has its own clientele, Barlow. It doesn't need to advertise. How do you know it so well? Because I was born in Whitewood. I see. And you'd have every reason to believe she'd be perfectly safe in going there. I have no reason to suppose that she wouldn't be. Nan struck me as being perfectly capable of taking care of herself. Yeah, I grant you that, but why hasn't she come back or let us know? Look, Barlow, I can understand your anxiety, but I'm quite sure there's nothing for you to worry about. Nothing at all. She's probably got absorbed in the subject and gone off someplace. I wish that all my class had her application. Yeah, well, I'm going to find out where this application led her. I'm going to retrace every step Nan took. I'm either going to find Nan or know what happened to her. I can't stop you from going. No. I'm not afraid. Afraid? Why? Well, if anything did happen to your sister and somebody else went along to try and find out about it. The same thing might happen to them? Possible. You seem to think something happened to my sister then. No, I just think you're jumping to conclusions, Barlow. Maybe, but uh, I shall find her. Professor Driscoll? Yes. I don't like to disturb you, but may I see you? Well, of course, please come in. Good luck in Whitewood. Thanks. I'm sorry, but did you say he was going to Whitewood? Yes, he is. It's silly to be surprised, but uh, I've just come from Whitewood. Really? Quite a coincidence. My own family happens to come from Whitewood. As a matter of fact, I was born there. Yes, I know. Please sit down. Thank you. Do you care for a drink? No, thank you. I think you know my grandfather, the Reverend Russell. Russell? Oh, yes, of course I do. How long have you been living in Whitewood? Since my grandmother died a few weeks ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, now, how can I help you? I've come about a pupil of yours, Barlow, Nan Barlow. Yes? She came to Whitewood two weeks ago. I met her and liked her, and she told me that she was a student in one of your classes, that you recommended that she stay at the Raven's Inn. That's quite right, I did. Well, that's what I've come to see you about. On the day after she arrived, she disappeared. Oh? Later, the police came asking questions. Her family were worried. I thought you might have their address. And why do you want her family's address? Because I have something of hers I want to return. Well, you just leave it with me, and I'll make sure they get it safely. Well, I, I don't want to trouble you. If, if you just give me their address... As you wish. Her address is... Dorchester Street, 225. She lives with her brother. As a matter of fact, he's a colleague of mine. You just met him. He was leaving when you arrived. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a lot of work to do. I'm rather a busy man at the moment. Of course. Thank you for your help. Not at all. I hope it achieves something. Well, you will remember me to your grandfather, won't you? Yes, of course. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Russell. Nan's locket, all right. As far as I know, it's unique. I gave it to her. Where did you get it? The servant at the inn gave it to me. It was strange. I don't think she wanted Mrs. Newless to know I had it. Mrs. Newless? Well, she runs the inn. Well, why did you come here, Miss, uh, Miss Russell? I found this. It's Professor Driscoll's notepaper. I found it in the pages of a book I lent your sister on her first evening in Whitewood. When she didn't return it, I went to the hotel. What was the book? An old book. A book about witchcraft. 
Do you believe in it, Miss Russell? I don't know. Sometimes I almost think I live with it. Live with it? It's an obsession of my grandfather's. Up till now, I didn't take him very seriously. He's an old man. But now I'm beginning to wonder if what he says isn't true. What does he say? That there's something evil about the village. That on certain nights, the inhabitants leave the streets, close their doors, and stay behind them. That on these nights, the dead come to life. Nights like Candlemas Eve? What do you know about Candlemas Eve? It's in one of Nan's books. I don't believe it. Things like this don't happen today. In Whitewood, I wonder. I'm going to Whitewood tomorrow after classes. I, I can give you a lift. Thank you, but I, I must get back. I can't leave my grandfather alone. He's blind. May I come and see you when I arrive? I'd, uh, I'd like to have a talk with him. Please do. It's the house next to the church. Goodbye. Right. I'll see you to the door. going to Whitewood? Yes. Would you take me along with you? It's a dark night for walking. You're the Reverend Russell's granddaughter, aren't you? Yes. How did you know? I know a great deal about Whitewood. Have you ever been there? None, then. Never seen you. To see me is a special privilege. It's reserved for a chosen few. What does that mean? We'll soon be at Whitewood now. This is as far as I go. You will... pretty, too. Yes, she is. Very pretty. A living descendant of those who were cursed. It somehow seems to make it better. Another day. And tomorrow. The witch's Sabbath. night is the witch's Sabbath. Tomorrow night, we will take over the world. All of our familiars will do our bidding. All of our possessed demons will do our murdering. We shall make Lucifer adore the Whitewood witches, and he shall welcome me at his side. And all of us shall inherit the earth. <laughs> You're my only hope. Or Dr. Macabro. Or Goulash. Oh, I don't know. Somebody. <gasps> They're coming to get me, Mia! Goulash, my fellow fiend. We shall get Masao and end of those witches for what they've done to you and my furry friends. Meow that we know that the potion works. I'm out of here. I'm coming to get you, Cat Pyra. This is personal. I 
knew I could smell the stench of a rotten witch. Which is that the real itch. Which is that the absolute. No, you're just another pussycat to do our bidding. No way, Jose. I shall claw your eyes out. There is absolutely nothing that shall stop me from here on Melt. Absolutely nothing. Ooh, yarn. <laughs> Wait a minute. Cursed yarn! <laughs> oh, enslaved by your instincts, that spell never fails to catch cat's tails. Son of a witch. <sighs> well, that did not go exactly according to my plans. Oh, darling, at least we are together, Meow. I'm sure Dr. McCarver will come up with something. I just hope it's sometime soon. I believe he already has, but... I think I screwed it all up. Hmm. Oogity boogity doogity. The witches are coming. The witches are coming. The master they worship, he cometh too. Taketh my eyes, he did. Blinded me with darkness eternal. A knuckle sandwich is what he needs. Yes. A great big knuckle sandwich. Boogity boogity doogity. Old man! Old man! What are you doing out there in the night, alone? These are dangerous times! The Vidma's going to get you! Uh, uh, get back, you creature of the night! Oh, get back, you, you, you stinky thing! I am a servant of God, and he will protect me! No, no, my friend! I am Goulash, the grave digger! I am no foe! I am your friend! The witches, they're out tonight. They're possessing men like you and me. I know this to be true, trust me. I am here as a friend to help you. Let me walk you home. Ah, yes. You speak the truth, young man. I'm sorry. I know of the devil and his mistresses. I will do what you ask. Thank you. Though I cannot see, I can indeed smell. And your gas is pleasant. And it assures me that you are a, a kind man and have a, a big heart. God bless you, my son. It's not my fault. I had tacos for dinner. Goulash! Goulash, is that you? Where are you? Come, get us out of here. Goulash, my fellow fiend, we're over here. In the cage. No, over here. Turn around. Warmer? Warmer. Colder, colder. Over here. Goulash. Did you hear that? By the great balls of Olden! I could swear I could hear Cat Pyra! Cat Pyra! Cat Pyra! Count Cat! Is that you? Oh my friends! So good to see you! Cat Pyra, we were so worried about you! And Count Cat, I don't know how you got here, but it's a pleasure for me to be here. Let me use my super stupid strength and I'll bust you out! Movie. Oh. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you, Goulash. <laughs> Which way to Wamput Road? Straight ahead, fork in the road, you see a sign, turn left. You heading for Whitewood? I am. Many people head this way? Not many. Is this the only way in and out of the town? In this direction, yep. You wouldn't remember by any chance a pretty girl in a convertible about a month ago. The Barlow girl. Read about her in the papers. Never seen her again. Told the police. Thanks. Could you tell me the way to Whitewood, please? Another one. It's 
straight ahead. Fork in the road, you see a sign, Warmport Road, turn left, takes you right in. But thanks. Let me warn you, young fella, they don't like strangers in Whitewood. Okay, fine. Thanks very much. Good evening. Good evening. I'd like a room, please. The inn is closing. Well, I'll only be here a few days. But the inn is closing. When? In two days. Well, if you don't mind, I I'd like to stay until then. If you insist. And could I... Could I have the, uh, the same room my, my sister had? Still available, isn't it? Yes, it's available. Mrs. Nolis, you told the police that my sister checked out. You are mistaken, Mr. Barlow. I told them that on the morning of February 2nd, I went to her room and found it empty, her bed not slept in, her luggage and car gone, and her bill unpaid. Well, you can put the charges on mine. When was the last time you saw her? On the evening of February 1st. It was shortly before midnight. She'd been in the lobby here dancing with some of the guests. She seemed to be enjoying herself. Did any particular guest pay a, a special attention to her? And not that I noticed. Your sister kept very much to herself. You know why she came to Whitewood? It is not my habit to inquire into people's private business. Well, would the fact that she was, she was investigating witchcraft have antagonized anyone in the village? Hardly. There have been other students here, you know. Besides, your sister was a very agreeable and likable young woman. Well, have you any idea where she might have gone? None. Thank you. Now, may I see the room? As you wish. It is this way. If you should need anything and I am not at the desk, you have only to ring the bell. Thank you. you've come. 
I saw your car outside the Ravens Inn earlier. I wondered what had happened to you. I've been talking with Mrs. Nulis, and then I, I took a walk around the village. Find out anything? Everyone here seems to be afraid of something. And you don't think it's just my imagination? I don't know. Who's to say where imagination ends and truth begins? It's, it's nothing tangible. It's just the way they look at you. I felt it too. May I see the, uh, the book that Nan borrowed? Yes. I put a marker between the pages where she must have stopped reading. Just sit down and I'll tell my grandfather you're here. Thank you. Father, this is Mr. Barlow. How do you do, sir? God be with you. Shall we sit where we'll be more comfortable? Here's your chair, Grandfather. You must be tired. I am really tired. I have little strength left these days for the fight. Won't you sit down? I'll make some coffee. The fight against what, Mr. Russell? Against the evil that besets this village. The people are creatures of the devil. They know no other god. You mean they worship Satan here, today? Satanism was never stronger than at the present time. For 200 years, the people of Whitewood have carried out rituals that mock the church's teaching. I find it very hard to believe, sir. I... Do not doubt, my son. It is real enough. For years, I struggled against the witches. Their master took away my sight. Seems incredible. I have tried to convince others. They, too, found it unbelievable. But I know these people have a pact with the devil to worship him and do his works. In return, he gives them eternal life. Eternal life? Aye. And to seal this bargain, they must sacrifice a young girl on two nights of the year. When are these nights, sir? Candlemas Eve. And the witch's Sabbath. Candlemas Eve, that's, that's February the 1st. And when is the witch's Sabbath? Tonight. Now you know why I came to see you. I had no idea it was so late. May I, may I have a rain check on the coffee? I'd like to have a few words with Miss Nulis again. Of course. Good night, sir. Good night. I'll see you to the door. God be with us. Well, Miss Russell, do you think that Nan's disappearance is connected in some way with these uh, witches' ceremonies? Yes. Well, I'd, uh, I'd like to come back later, if I may. Please do. And my name is Pat. Well, mine's Richard. I think I feel better now you're here. Well, I'm, I'm going to stay until I find out what's happened to Nan. Take care. Now drink your coffee before it gets cold. You must not see that young man again tonight. Why not? The devil comes in many disguises. I'll get you a spoon. And father, there's a bird in the drawer. It's got an arrow through it. Go and look on the front door. Sprig of wood 
fine. Shut the door. Shut the door quickly. Grandfather, what does it mean? Now listen, my darling. This is their sign. The witch's sign. What can we do? We must leave here. Leave here immediately. Mrs. Newless. Mr. Barlow. Is that for me? Yes. Hello? Dick. Dick, I'm in terrible danger. We've got to leave Whitewood at once. Danger? But from what? We've got to leave... Ah! Pat! Dick, help me! Patricia! Pat! What's happened, Mr. Russell? The witches, the witches have Patricia destroy them. Oh, Mr. Russell, how? The shadow of the cross. Use the cross. I adjure the old creatures of salt by the living God.
Harlow. Settled with Mrs. Lewis. You stay here. <laughs> They'll never know. 
<laughs> good. Very good. The witches just poured their drinks. They're about to make a toast. Fantastic. I hope this works. To the witches Sabbath. To the white hood witches. To the devil our father. For centuries our coven has waited for him to return to his throne and have us by his side to rule this earth and to rule man. We shall all rise and be victorious! They're burping. It's gonna work. They're gonna blow. They're gonna blow! Wow, that was a close one, Count Cat. We did it again. We thwarted evil and saved the world. Count another one for Night Shadow Theater crew. Indeed, the Dr. Macabro. Another cat cast the free avoid and once again. And all my furry feline friends are now safe again. And, you know, the entire human that I saved, unfortunately, in the process. What you gonna do? <laughs> Ah. Darling, now we can go on with our nine lives intact. Dr. Macabro, thank you. You're very welcome. But where is Goulash? Well, that was a good one, my friends. Elizabeth Selwyn and the Whitewood Witches are kaplooey. See you? Wouldn't want to be you. Dr. Macabro is fine and dandy. Count Cat and Cat Pyra making romance in the pants at the sun dance. You know, Kitty Puss, my babushka was not wrong. You know, you have to be careful who you trust. And once you have friends, I mean real friends, like Dr. Macabro and Count Cat, then you have it all. I bid you all a good night. I look forward to seeing you next time on the next Night Shadow Theater.